We're asking, what is the one book Canadians need right now? And to answer that question, the five celebrity panelists have joined me in studio. They've each selected a title to defend, and today they will be doing a brief synopsis and defense of that title. Hi, everybody. Hello. How's it going? I don't know about brief, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> try to play nice. Everyone's going to do a brief one. Candy's going to get about five and a half minutes. It's going to be good. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give go around the uh, table asking each of you to give a 30-second elevator pitch. During that 30 seconds, I want you to make an appeal to us. What's your book all about, and why is it the book that Canada needs right now? Mm. And to get you all prepped for the big week in March, <laughs> I'm going to be using the official Canada Reads Bell. Candy, you got to use this before. <laughs> I did when I was hosting here. I feel you. a certain torch bell passing going That's on right amazing. now. I feel very good about this. Right, can I try it out? Um, yeah. What do you think? Well, you, I mean, let's be honest. You did before we, we started. You, you were ringing the thing I wanted to yeah. one time, punch it. One time for a <laughs> heart But feel free for the people. Well, I'm, I'm, ner- I'm nervous on the radio to do it. <laughs> no, I, okay. I, I got some performance really? anxiety, Chantel. Let's do Give it. me a break. Let's do it. Hit it. Hit it. Okay. Look at that. Just I think you could hit it a little harder. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. From That's bologna good. sandwiches to bells, <laughs> we share it all. To start things off, our first panelist is one of Canada's most celebrated musicians, a platinum album seller, an impressive list of collaborators, including Drake and Kendrick Lamar and Avril Lavigne. Chantal Kravietzuk, what book are you defending this year? I am defending um, Cela Watt Cloutier's The Right to Be Cold. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 30 seconds to defend your book. At okay, the start wait, of the though. Bell. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Is this the synopsis? Or is this, this is the, the, this is the ele- okay. we'll call this the elevator pitch. The pitch, okay. Yeah, if you oh have 30 seconds in elevator. I, now, this is unprepared. I have to, okay. Right. Ready? And the, at the beginning of the bell, 30 seconds starts. Mm. All right, this book is exactly what the theme um, of Canada Reads is this year. It's, it's about the urgency um, that the climate... Uh, is presenting to us, that the earth is begging us to listen. Um, Sila shows us that each individual is um, not only com- directly connected to, to the planet and its, manifest- its manifestations, but is also important in, in the whole scheme of things. Nailed it. Shento Kravietsuk, beautiful job. Got it together in about 30 30- Maybe 31 seconds, but that, oh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm not going to say that it, make me a, it made me a little upset that it wasn't prepared. Uh, and it was like off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I believe you have yours memorized my brain fully. Is, like, my, I'm, yours I'm, yours I, is in a limerick hurt. form. I, I am hurting. reading. Okay. Yes. The second okay. Canada Reads 2017 panelist is a man known for his way with words, <laughs> yeah. but no pressure. Humble the poet. You know what, I got a, a secret yeah. weapon. I just came from America and I brought a whole pocket full of alternative facts. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, always useful. Good. Always get, useful. Yeah. Just, just, just south of the border. Yeah, nice. There are alternative like, yeah, facts. Yeah, they don't everywhere. exist out here, but I'm going to bring them. So, so I don't think anybody else We're either going to find out what this book is about or exactly what it's not about Pretty right now. Much, yeah. Humble the poet is a Toronto-based spoken word poet. Uh, which book are you championing I this year? I got 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. 15 Dogs won the Giller Prize in 2015. Correct. It's the, I want to point out the book won the Giller Prize. 15 Dogs did not win the Giller Prize yeah. in 2015. Boom. Thank you very much, Candy. I'm going to hit the bell, and then you got 30 seconds. What do you think? Yeah. All right, ready? Sure. So if you read this book... Uh, immediately, the Toronto Maple Leafs will win the Stanley Cup, and uh, <laughs> so will the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays will win the World Series all at the same time. So you need to read this book. Um, but seriously, Fifteen Dogs is, is a really dope book. Who doesn't love dogs? And it explores all the cool things and interesting things and painful things about what it means to be a human by giving those qualities to fifteen different dogs, and we learn about ourselves through these different animals. Should I keep going? No, that's it, man. You did it. You did it. No, I saw the the clocks right there. That was 27 seconds. I'm, 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 that's amazing. I quit. I and, quit. And it was <laughs> even a bad <laughs> bell. Humble, yeah. the <laughs> Humble the Poet defending <laughs> Humble the Poet defending 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. That was really beautiful, Humble. <laughs> Up next, we have best friend of the show, Candy Palmiter. Hi, Candy. Hi, Tom. Always lovely when I get to be with you. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, um, I'm Candy Palmiter, if you don't know Candy, somehow is a comedian, motivational speaker. You hear her on CBC Radio 1. Which book did you choose for Canada Reads? I chose The Break by Katerina Vermet. All right, you ready for this? In 30 seconds, tell me why it's the book that Canada needs right now. It's a very cold winter night in inner city Winnipeg, and young Stella looks out the window and sees a crime taking place, and she calls the police. 
And from there opens a very well-crafted, well-written book, a story that will not let you go, but will tell you the story of different generations of Indigenous women. And you get to know not just the victim, but the perpetrator. And you understand how colonization has created this entire situation. Every Canadian needs to read this to understand relations. Candy Palmer, I'm just going I'm not going to lie to you. You're you're in the front run. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was you, that was that was a beautiful yeah. thing. I think she prepared. I I think <laughs> she prepared. <laughs> yeah. I felt like I was at the beginning of Law and Order there. Yeah. Like I felt like in the criminal justice <laughs> dun, dun. system. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's some real You're a lawyer too, right? That's I some, am a lawyer. That's, that's some dun, real dun, 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 lawyer dun, 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 stuff dun, 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 going on here right now. Great job. Our next panelist is Jody Middick, a politician and former Master Corporal and Sniper Team Leader. He's currently a city councillor in Ottawa, and he joins us on the phone from Toronto. Hi, Jody. Hey, how's it going? I'm very well. What book are you going to be defending this year? My book is Nostalgia by M.G. Vasanji. So Nostalgia by M.G. Vasanji. Uh, I'll, can, can you hear the bell over the phone, Jody? Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay, great. So I'll hit the bell, and you got yourself 30 seconds. Okay. So nostalgia is based in the future in a world that's been divided into the haves and the haves nots. And the haves have figured out a way to live forever, but they don't want to bring their past with them. And this book will show you that no matter how much you want to change who you are and, and change your reality, that you can never leave your past behind you. I got to tell you, that was, that was really 23 good. seconds. Ooh. So Military precision. Why? Very, that's my that's my thing. I'm efficiency. I'm all about getting it done as quickly as possible. <laughs> this, this, this year's Canada Reads is going to last about two days. You're just going to get them all done. You're going to be knocking out yeah, books nonstop. Right. We're going to get rid of some of that inefficiency. I'm working on it. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Welcome to the CBC. And finally, we have Tamara Taylor, uh, best known for her role as Dr. Camille Saroyan, head of the forensic division on the crime series Bones. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, great to be here. And what book? Will you be championing for Canada Reads? I am championing Company Town by Madeline Ashby. All right, ready for this? I'm going to hit the bell, and then you got to tell Canada why it's the book that they need. Okay. 30 seconds. Canada is the ultimate melting pot. Canadian women are mixed, multi-ethnic, strong, scrappy, and funny, and it is rare that we get to see reflections of ourselves in literature. Madeline Ashby my new girl crush, clearly thought it was time to change that in the most prophetically imaginative way. Set on an oil rig in the future, our half-breed heroine takes us on a hunt for a serial, serial killer and her self-worth, both of which will affect the fate of her town. I want to say 30 seconds right on the dot. That was, oh, that was incredibly yeah, 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 impressive. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So the, the rat right there is Tamara <laughs> Taylor. Did you just drop the mic? Oh I, my might gosh, have, I might have. I might have just. <laughs> again, again this is the I'm CBC. Sorry, you owe us money for that now. Yeah. <laughs> Tamara Taylor defending Madeline Ashby's company town. So the competition clearly fierce. You guys are going to be duking it out for four days in March. You just met. Is it yesterday? Mm -hmm. You guys yep. met. Chantel, what were your first impressions? How are you feeling going into this? I was uh, a little bit nervous, but the book that I chose has actually led me to believe that this is one of, this is one of those moments in life where I believe this is really supposed to be happening. Like I'm not going to say it's God or you know it could be your higher power, but I truly believe that um, there is a purpose that we're all here together. Um, and that we have been led to to these books, um, to the messages that um, that are, you know lie within them, and there's there's a purpose um, that for us to to share this this message, um, especially my book because it is about the urgent situation we are in, uh, trying to mitigate uh, you know the the climate issue, um, and. I can't think of anything more important on this planet. There is no other problem that needs to be solved if we cannot solve the, the, the problem of this, this planet's well, yeah, wellness. Th there are no there other are problems, no other there problems. Are no other problems you, you, to solve until we take care of you that. Get, you get the feeling that this yeah. is going to be not just a conversation about the books, but a conversation about some, some grander issues. Uh, Jody, what were your first impressions when you started uh, meeting everybody yesterday? Oh, it was great. I was uh, excited, actually, to meet some uh, some of the people there. And um, uh, the first thing I noticed is that we're all uh, we're all very strong personalities, and I think that it'll make for a really good competition because uh, there's no slouches around. Mm -hmm. not, not a sl not, not not a slouch in the group, Tamara. Who do you uh -huh. think? Who's your biggest competition? You think going in? 
She points a candy palm at her. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I spotted not off, candy. To a, not off to a great start for radio with the pointing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sorry. You know? Well, guys, you should. I, I, I have a telepathic thing that I'm working on. It's just something. It's something I've done. Clearly, I might have to speak it. It's definitely. It's it's candy. Oh, my. Yeah. Humble the Poet, who do you think is your biggest competition? Um... To be honest, I didn't even view this as a competition until people started talking about it yesterday. It's a little bit more intense than you think it is going. I remember when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, yeah, a bunch of people get together, talk about books. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, you know what? I can put in my schedule reading, and it counts as being productive. <laughs> exactly. Like, how many people get to do that every day? Exactly. Like, guilt-free oh, wow. reading. So. Yeah. Y- you and I are very different than in how we looked at this. <laughs> oh, I can, I can tell. Yeah. Candy's taping up her fists as that we speak. Exactly. <laughs> I, do, I do think Candy has a handle on... What this is on that level, exactly. And I agree with humble. I, I don't have that. Nor you did know. I. I mean, if there was a ping pong table here, then I would. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I watch that Canada there. reads competitively over the years. Like I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I tweet yeah. competitively. Gamble so on it. <laughs> I have put in my rider. I want Rocky music when I come in. My yeah. hair is going to be in fight braid. That's going to be da da da. But Candy, how's that feeling? Yeah. I mean, it, you, you've been discussed as a number of people's uh, big competition. You, you know, are you, how are you feeling about this? I have. I I love it. That is great. The only thing I worry <laughs> about is this. A couple <laughs> no of problem. years ago. Yeah. A couple of years ago, Tom. Thomas King's book, One, An Inconvenient Indian, was knocked out in the first round. And I feel there was a survivor-like thing that went down where people got together and knocked the heaviest competition out first. Ooh. I oh, am hoping for the idea. I am hoping <laughs> that among my honorable contestants that You're we will put the book first and yeah. foremost and that we actually vote on the books because Chantal's right about the environment being so important. If we could understand and accept and and um, heal our wounds with Indigenous people, the environment mm-hmm. would be taken be care fixed. of by us. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I and and I think that a lot of people need their aspirins to be mushed with a little bit of watermelon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the fact that the break is a beautiful novel, wonderfully written, very compelling prose, uh, I think would allow more Canadians to open their minds to it and to see that different perspectives exist out there. Mm. Candy, you're a prize fighter. You're a prize fighter. Da, 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 Tamara da, da, Taylor, da, da. Jody Middick, Candy Palmiter, Humble the Poet, and Chantal Kravietzik. Thanks so much for coming in and good luck with Canada Reads. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Lots, Thanks, guys. Lots to look forward to in Canada Reads this year. You can catch the Canada Reads debates from March 27th to the 30th on Radio 1, CBC TV, and CBC Books online stream after I pick up the phone. We'll have more from the panelists <laughs> in the coming weeks right here on Q. You can find out more about Canada Reads books, authors, and panelists at our website, cbc.ca slash q.